What we're trying to do is something called the equivalent width measurement. And that is a way to estimate the area under this V-shaped curve here from one down to where the bottom is by doing a very simple chunk of geometry. So the first thing you need to do is measure from the top of the flux, which would be one, down to the deepest point of absorption. And we're literally going to do that by counting. So this is one, and this is zero point. This is going up by 0 0.05. So this is 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 46 point. If you said 46, you probably would be okay. So uh, I'm going to come up here and put in column C, max uh, abs for absorption. Uh, and maybe I'll put flux so everybody knows what I mean. And uh, again, we did that as 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 46 and a half maybe. So 0 0.465, and I may be getting a little too precise. You can definitely be a little bit less precise and be okay. And what that is, is that's how far down from one to here. So the truth is though, that what we need to do is go half of that on the, on the y-axis and then find out what wavelength it is. We're gonna do it on the left, we're gonna do it on the right, and then the difference between the two will help us make our calculation. So the max is not what we want. We want the half max. And what I'm gonna do is say equals, to put a formula in there, I'm gonna click the, the one that I typed, and it notice, notice it put C2 in there and then put it over two. So that's half max. So what I'm looking for is uh, where this blue curve has a value in the y, on the y-axis of 0 0.23. Again, it's going to be really hard to get that precise. I probably didn't need to be. but So what I want to do is if I go down uh, from, z from 1, uh, 0 0.23 from there. So this is 5, this is 10, this is 15, this is 20, then 21, 22, 23, somewhere around. It looks like it's very close to where it crosses this line, which is 6643.5. So what I'm going to do is on column E, I'm going to put left, uh, let, what should we call this? Full width, half max. That's the calculation. So now I've forgotten what it was. Uh, so we want to go down 0 0.23. So that would be 5, 10, 15, 20, and then 1, 2, 3. Yeah, right around there. 6643.5. 6643.5 for the left uh, full width at half max, which is this. We're trying to find out how wide this is when we're at half the half maximum value. And we'll label this one right full width half max. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go down 5, 10, 15, 20, 23, wait, 1, 2, 3. I got to get really close here, y'all. So around there, and that looks like uh, 6, 6, 4, 3, 1, 2, 3. 6, 6, 4, 3, 3. 6, 6. 43.73, and I'm, I'm eyeballing that. So what that means is I can now find the equivalent width. So what that is, it's the difference between these two. So how many uh, angstroms there are between the right and the left times how far down that bell curve went, which was our uh, max abs. So I'm going to call this equiv width, and let's do a formula equals and then open oops open parenthesis and we're going to say right minus left i'm clicking on those and then close parenthesis and then we're going to multiply by this guy over here and then hit enter and then the number that it spits out is our equivalent width we took the right hand wavelength at full width at half max on the right anyway and then took it on the left the full width is actually the difference between the two and we do it at half the the deal here is if you find the area of this bit here that's actually very close to what you need to find the area of the whole thing and there's more to the story than that but that's that's how it goes so what you should do is find the equivalent width of all five of these save that and we'll go from there